it's time to get wild with the new legendary creatures of Wilds of Eldraine. In this video, I'll be talking about my favorite commanders from the new standard set. These are all going to be cards that you can play as your commander in Commander, Historic Brawl, or Brawl. I'm going to talk about what they are, why I think they're so great, and the strategies I think that surround them. Before I get any further into the video, I also want to say thank you to Wizards of the Coast for sponsoring this video as part of the MTG Ambassador Program. Now, as part of this video, I'm only going to be talking about cards that are in the actual Wilds of Eldraine set, which means I won't be talking about the two commander decks. There are a bunch of really cool legends in this set, as well as some really cool new build around cards. I especially like the fairies deck right here. Uh, I think that this is a really interesting deck and I'm looking forward to upgrading it with the new fairies that are in the actual set. But we're not talking about those because you can't play them in Historic Brawl, which is the format that I play the most of. So we're just going to be going through a document I actually made while I was doing my set review of my favorite commanders from Wilds of Eldraine, starting with Imodane the Pyrohammer. Not only does she have a really, really cool name uh, and a really, really cool hammer, she also has a cool way to play. This is a four mana 4-4 four, four, where whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control targets only a single creature and deals damage to that creature, you then reflect that damage onto each opponent. Now the each opponent part is really cool for Commander, but I think Imidoin is pretty sweet for just 1v1 historic brawl. When you're playing against just one person, you could really focus your firepower onto their threats. Now by that I mean your opponent plays a Lanor Elf and you use Lightning Bolt on it. Ah, a classic move, bolting the elf or bolting the bird if you were in Commander. Now Imidoin, as she's out on the battlefield when that happens, says, ah, Excellent. You have dealt damage to this small elf. I will also deal damage to your opponent's face. Which means that you are not just controlling the board, you're taking down your opponent at the same time. I think that Imidane is so sweet as well, with all of the pieces of burn that actually deal more damage to creatures for the same amount of mana versus if you were casting similar spells at your opponent's face or some spells that actually only deal damage to creatures. You can also do damage to your own creatures. If you are, let's say, starved for targets, but you have something big and powerful that deals a lot of damage, maybe like Perforos' Intervention, which deals twice X damage to a creature or planeswalker, you say, ah, how excellent. I will deal 12 damage to Imidane, which then reflects 12 damage to each of my opponents which might just finish them off. I don't know how low have you got your opponent as a mono-red burn deck. Probably pretty low. Uh, I think that Imidane is a fantastic use of those kind of higher-powered burn spells that are better against creatures versus just burning your opponent's face in a more traditional fashion. Imidane seems like a really sweet commander for those people looking to make things hot, spicy, and filled with fire. The next commander I want to talk about is Baluna Grand Squall. Lulam Grand Squall is a giant noble who cares about adventures, and she's in the best three colors for adventures. It's not just the Lucky Clovers here, though there is a new creature in the set that doubles as a Lucky Clover in blue. Uh, this is a card that gets you adventures through her adventure. It's an instant that mills and then puts all cards with adventures that you milled back into your hand. And as an Another great part for adventures. You play her, she's a 3-mana 4-4 four, four with Trample, and she makes your permanents that have adventures attached to them cost one less. That's not the adventure side, the instant or sorcery. It's the creature itself, or the permanent itself. They're not all creatures, but most of them are creatures. I love that Balloon of Grand Squall is in green, blue, red. That's two more colors, because it means that you can play things like Edgewell Innkeeper to draw cards off the adventure spells, or blue for petty theft and similar you have also, of course, red Bone Crusher Giants. You have got the best adventures in these colors, though I believe the original adventure centric color was green white. I actually played a green white adventures deck at a Pro Tour once. That's not a joke. I had a great time. I did not play that well, but that's all right because somebody else did take adventures into the top eight. That's right. Let's go, Silesnia Adventures. Baluna Grand Squall, though, seems like a fantastic commander for the people looking to play adventures. There is another adventures commander. There's actually two. There's Lozan and there's Gorian. But I think that Baluna Grand Squall is just better than either of them, not just because she has an adventure, so she has payoff with other adventure-centric cards, 
but because she's super well statted and she can beat face. She's a three mana four four with trample. She's gonna do some damage. And commander damage might not be real in historic brawl, but it's real in my heart. And in commander. Because it's commander damage. If you haven't seen this next card yet, you've almost certainly seen the art, because it's the face of a lot of this set. Ariette of the Charmed Apple, or Arietti of the Charmed Apple. I'm not sure how her name is actually said, but she's a 3-mana 2-4 that cares about auras. And Orzov Auras is such a cool build around. Each creature that's enchanted by an aura you control can't attack you or planeswalkers you control, which means you can even use your sweet offensive auras that normally would buff up your creatures to stop your opponents from attacking you. Everything is a pacify in the hands of this human warlock. And at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses X life, and you gain X life, where X is the number of auras you control. I think that this is such a cool payoff of just, I'm going to load up a ton of different auras. My creatures, your creatures, who even cares? Put some on your planeswalkers too, get a faith spetters in there, and drain you out over time, because this says each opponent on it, double bonus. It's even better if you're in multiplayer, because you get to drain out the whole table at a time, and you get to gain a bunch of life. I think that this is a really interesting build around that lets you play a lot of the white centric enchantment payoff cards on top of just the aura specific things like SRAM. You can even play all of the constellation cards that are good in these colors. There's not that many in black, but I'm sure there's a couple you'd want to get in here, especially in Commander itself. Uh, in Historic Brawl, I think that Ariette seems really cool for a 1v1 commander, and I'm looking forward to trying her out and playing a lot of my favorite Orzov cards. Well, they're not all removal, but a lot of them are removal. It's good colors for killing stuff. Oregus just throwing auras onto things. I love it either way. I also want to say that this commander is amazing with the various auras that make your opponent like lose one life every turn that they have the creature with the aura on them out. Oh, I just want to drain people out with auras so bad. Hilda of the Icy Crown, speaking of these various witch queens, this is the second of the witch queens. I didn't talk about the third witch queen, um, Agatha. I think that she's all right, but I can't really figure out how to build around her yet. If something comes up with her, though, we'll see. Hilda, though, very important. Hilda here is part of the blue-white archetype in the set, which cares about tapping things down. And what does she do? She gives you sweet payoff when you tap things down. Whenever you tap an untapped creature your opponent controls, think like an icy manipulator effect, you may pay one. When you do, make a blue-white elemental creature token of 4-4 four, four for a measly one mana. Oh, goodness. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control, you know, like those elementals, or scry two and then draw a card. These are always going to be good abilities to have because there's none of these that are just bad in a vacuum. Make a big creature. Yes, make all your creatures bigger. Double yes. Scry two, draw a card. That's better than an opt. Now you have to pack your deck filled with things that let you tap your opponent's creatures. That's easy. There's so many frost lynxes out there and icy manipulators and other such effects. There's also tons of things that are like in white that you pay some amount, tap the creature, tap your opponent's stuff. These are all very common effects, and a lot of them are on commons and uncommons, meaning that they should be pretty easy to come by. Hilda of the Icy Crown could be really annoying to play against because of all of the power behind just, you're tapping things, you're a tempo player, you can supplement with counter spells, but also you're making big creatures, and you're just going to clog up the board and swing in for lethal pretty quickly with Hilda. It is hard to kind of get her out on curve because she does cost four, but I'm sure that people are going to find a way to play and build around Hilda of the Icy Crown. Johan is, well, he's the Apprentice Sorcerer or the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of flavor text in the set that has Johan on them, and they're all really, really fun. Johan is a four mana two five that lets you look at the top card of your library at any time. Once each turn, yours and your opponent's turns, you may cast an instant or sorcery from the top of your library. What goes good with extra cards and casting them on other people's turns? Oh, uh, counter spells. Johan is a counter spell and commander, which means I probably won't be playing him, but a lot of people will. He's going to be great in 1v1 specifically because he's essentially giving you a bigger hand size. And once each turn is enough for me to say, that's a lot of power to be playing spells off of your deck. Now it's only instants and sorceries, which is counter spells anyway. You can also put them burn in there because, you know, you're in red. There's also just like a lot of good card draw spells in blue that if you want to 
I don't know, throw some card draw in there too. Why not? I think Johan's into it. And if you want to have a good laugh, look through the Wilds of Eldraine set and look at all of the things that are messed up or him just experimenting with various spells. They're very cute. It's the Sorcerer's Apprentice story, but, you know, less broomsticks, more everything's on fire. Kellen, the Fae Blooded. Uh, I'm going to give a very quick spoiler here. Uh, just skip 10 seconds ahead if you don't want to hear it. It's from the story. Kellen is Oko's son. Okay, now everybody else can come back and listen to me talk about Kellen. Kellen is Fae Blood is uh, what's giving him access to these magical blades slash whips that you see in his hand. He's a three mana tutu with double strike. Nice. That means he's great at holding auras and equipments. And other creatures you control get plus one plus over each aura and equipment attached to Kellen. Now, Birthright Boon, the adventure side of this card, is just a two mana tutor. Search your library for an aura or equipment, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shovel. Dang, that's really good. This is good for getting offensive auras, things that will buff up your creature. Equipment, hitting even harder, maybe giving protection from colors or indestructible. There's lots of great equipment out there. Or it's just like getting huge, hitting face, stopping your opponent from doing anything. There's lots of great defensive auras out there that are like pacify and arrest effects. They're less common, but there's actually a new one that is an exiling aura. I'm talking about ossification. It's so fantastic. And, and Kellen makes it even better. I think that Kellen seems like a really fun Boros aggro commander for that auras and equipments theme uh you can definitely run this as specifically just equipments and have more artifact payoff or just auras and have more uh enchantment payoff i kind of like the hybrid approach but i could see going one way or the other just so you could really concentrate your deck neva stalked by nightmares Ooh, this is an uncommon commander and a four mana two two you might be thinking huh amy those stats don't seem so good but it's not about her stats. No, it's about this spooky lady's abilities. When she enters the battlefield, you bring a creature or enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. Excellent. I love a little recursion. She's got menace. And whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on Neva and then scry one. I think that this works really great with the new aura tokens that are a part of the set, but also with one of my favorite other mechanics, sagas sagas sacrifice themselves when they finish their final chapter which means that they will be going to the graveyard so you can get them back with neva and so you can get that plus one plus one counter and scry one neva is both blinkable and yes there are some blinking artifacts out there uh not artifacts enchantments i'm so great at talking but also there's just like these really cool things that you can do around just getting more enchantments from the battlefield to the graveyard. Uh, a lot of these are just kill spell auras, things like Myers Grasp that things deals minus three, minus three. Sometimes it's about just having enchantment creatures. Yeah, lots of enchantment creatures out there. Um, if they die, they go to the graveyard, you get the buff, Neva grows, and you get the scry to find more good pieces. Do I think that this is an overwhelmingly powerful commander? No. Do I think it's really cool and a cool build around as an uncommon? Yes, absolutely. 100%. I mentioned before, fairies. Now, fairies got their own pre-con, but I can't play this in Historic Brawl. You know what I can play in Historic Brawl? Obira Dreaming Duelist. Obira Dreaming Duelist is a fairy warrior with flash and flying, and for only two mana, it's a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever another fairy enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. Bitter Blossom eat your heart out. Drain your opponents by playing fairies. This is going to be a typal deck that cares about just spilling out tons of fairies onto the board, whether those are fairy tokens or fairy creature cards. Either of them work for this commander. I think that Obira has one major downside if you're playing this as a historic brawl commander, and that's that there's not that many fairies in arena, at least relative to paper. We don't have a lot of the older Lorwyn fairies. But I think that Obira is still a very cool pick, and because you're in blue and black, you can supplement with a good number of kill spells, counter spells, and other just powerful spells in those colors to help keep this small creature in the air. That's right, it's a two mana, two, two flyer, so you can also just attack for two over and over and over. Also, you'll have a commander that's asleep, so you can just kind of play with your eyes closed. It's to get in the spirit of things.
Both of the Kenrith twins have similar abilities in this set, but I think that Rowan really stands out as a stronger commander. Rowan, Scion of War, is a 3-mana 4-2 with Menace, meaning she can deal some damage, but you might not want to attack with her because her tap ability can add up to a lot. You tap her, and spells you cast a turn that are black and or red cost X less to cast, where X is the amount of life you lost this turn. You have to activate this as a sorcery speed ability, so you can't be tricky and use this as burn. But you can deal a whole bunch of damage to yourself and then deal a whole bunch of damage to your opponent. Uh, and because this is a cost reduction by X, this works super strong with, I would say, Rowan's signature spell, Crackle with Power. That's the XXX Red Red spell that deals five times X damage to X targets. Oh my god, Rowan, you are going to be doing so much. And since you care about how much life we, the person playing it, lose. Well, it's time to start playing with blood. There's new cards being added to Arena like Necropotence, but there's also older cards that just let you pay life in order to draw cards, bring creatures back from the graveyard, or just stay alive, cast spells. Bolus's Citadel is going to be an amazing card with this commander. And there's a bunch of other ways that you can lose life through you know, just dealing damage to your opponent's creatures. There's a lot of things that just cause damage to you, and if you can intentionally cause that damage on your turn, that's even better. Uh, I think that Rowan Scion of War is the kind of card that might not be that game-winningly powerful on her own, but in combination with some of these big spells, could get real nasty real fast. Similar to Hilda, Sheree of Numbing Depths is a blue-white commander that cares about tapping down your opponent's creatures. And I say that she definitely goes into the Hilda deck, because whenever she enters the battlefield, you tap an opponent's creature and then you put a stun counter on it. Excellent! Our Frost Links for 4 mana 2-3, I'm still fine with that. And whenever you tap one or more untapped creatures your opponent's control, draw a card. It only triggers once each turn, but there's a bunch of instant speed effects like this, especially in white, that you can use on your opponent's turn. And then on your turn, you can use your other abilities to do it again, so you're drawing a net maybe two cards, maybe more if you're playing with four players, and tapping down your opponent's things to stop them from attacking you, or stop them from blocking so you can attack them. I really like this tap ability. I think that it's going to be really frustrating to play against, but I think that it's a cool build around, and I like to see payoff for something so strange as tapping down your opponent's cards. The only thing I don't like about this is if your opponent doesn't have any creatures, there's nothing to tap down. There's a few ways to give your opponent's creatures, but it's hard to do in blue and white colors. I'm sure somebody will figure out a fun way to give your opponent's creatures and then tap them down. Talion the Kindly Lord. This is a feature card from both the art of the set and also from the story, but also a very, very strong and kind of scary card. By the way, if you get one of these in draft, pack one, pick one it, trust me. This is a 4 mana 3 4 with flying. When it enters the battlefield, you choose a number between 1 and 10, and whenever an opponent casts a spell with the mana value, power, or toughness equal to the chosen number, that player loses 2 life and you draw a card. Now, in games of EDH, you're probably going to be naming 2, and in games of Limited, you're probably going to be naming 3, and in games of Historic Brawl, you're probably going to be naming two or three, but actually it really depends on who you're playing against because you could also just name whatever the mana value of your opponent's commander is if you know they're going to be casting it and be like, oh yeah, you're casting that, that costs four and a bunch of other four drops. Awesome, I name four. I know you have a bunch of things with four toughness. I know you have a bunch of things that have four power. If it's a Goraclaw deck, yeah, there's going to be a lot of four power stuff. I think that Talion is a very cool commander because it cares about what your opponents are playing and you can be tricky by trying to figure out how you can get the most value out of this commander uh talion is also a just flying beater so if they're just you know losing life off of talion's ability and off talion themselves you're going to add up to a lot of damage being dealt just by chilling on the board just by swinging in for maybe three damage a turn on top of those drain effects and because you draw a card whenever this ability is triggered nice that's cards and you can get those cards to be counter spells kill spells things that are good in these colors because it's blue and black maybe if you want to get gutsy you could run this as like some weird drain commander i believe in you 
And last, but certainly not least, is Yenna Red Tooth Regent. The Red Tooths are a bunch of elves that transform into foxes. I just felt like saying that. It doesn't have any importance to what's actually on the card. Uh, Yenna is a 4-mana four 4-4. Four. Cool. Stats. Also has an ability to tap. Choose target enchantment you control that doesn't have the same name as another permanent you control. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it isn't legendary. If the token is an aura, untap Yenna, scry too. You can only activate this as a sorcery. Yenna lets you make a non-legendary copy of Calyx, which then you can use to make more copies of the non-legendary copy of Calyx. Okay, so like Calyx, that's the real commander here. You can put Yenna into the Calyx X, but also Yenna's really, really cool. Making a copy of your super powerful enchantress cards, many of which are enchantments themselves, is going to be just so spicy. And if you're built around auras or just have some really powerful auras, then you can double up on those to get in a lot of sweet effects or damage on the board. I think that Yenna being an enchantments clone commander is kind of cool, especially since we just got another enchantments clone commander, Calyx. I think the two of them are going to work really well together. And if you have effects like Parallel Lives, Anointed Procession, and Doubling Season, all three of which are going to be in Arena. That's right, we're getting Doubling Season as part of this set. Uh, then you can go crazy. Sure, it only makes a copy the once, but you only need that one copy. And if you do have one of those token doublers, you will still get twice the tokens out of that one activation. Also, there's lots of other ways that you can copy it once you have the copies, or you can just be like, oh, a spell that makes a copy of a token I control? How wonderful, let's populate. And you can go wild with Yenna. The only thing that would make her stronger is if she was an enchantment her in herself. She's not, that's fine, she's great. I think that Yenna is a really cool card and I'm looking forward to building her in Historic Brawl and hopefully even Commander. I've never actually had a Selesnia enchantment deck in Commander. Until now. That's right. Thank you Wizards of the Coast for sponsoring this video and for sending me this deck. And if you are looking to play this new set, you can sign up for a local pre-release. You can maybe go ahead and Find some cards at a local game store. There's going to be boxes on sale, packs on sale soon. Or you could go ahead and uh, use the link in the description of the video to also find some cards. I believe that's the link that Wizards of the Coast has that goes to their official store. So you can get cards like these ones, which I didn't talk about in this video. Because we're talking about Historic Brawl. Gosh darn it. I love Historic Brawl so much. Thank you for watching. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. I hope you have a wild time with Wilds of Eldraine. Let's go!